tonight's video for Lyme Disease Awareness Month is going to be about how I cope with chronic Lyme disease and how I cope with the losses that it has brought and the changes that it has brought into my life. This is going to be probably uploaded technically on Tuesday because I didn't get a chance to upload it, but it is the video for Monday. So there might be two up for Tuesday, but this one is Monday's video. So basically, when before I was diagnosed with Lyme disease, I was already out of ballet, which was my whole world. Um, there's a whole video on me talking about like the biggest loss in my life being ballet and I still think that's true I my coping way for that there really wasn't one in the beginning I did not cope well at all um, I cried every night because I missed ballet and I couldn't sleep I thought about ballet all day that's the time when um, I couldn't handle it and we changed my bedroom from being ballet themed and having all my ballet pictures on the wall to the blue and changing it up because I couldn't cope with being out of ballet, especially because it wasn't like I was out for a week. Um, I was out for over two years and then got to take about three classes last summer and then after having a drop seizure in ballet, I took like maybe four classes total, like a couple with my seizure helmet on. And after that, I haven't danced since, so it's been like pretty much another year, which makes it three years total of not dancing. And that's just, that in itself is extremely, extremely hard for me because dance made up all of my life besides school. I would do my homework at the dance studio. My mom was a dance teacher at my dance studio. So I was there all day till nine o'clock at night and then went home, did homework, took a shower, went to bed, went to school the next morning, went right to dance danced all day, did homework, went to bed. So then you take out school because I was out of school and dance and there was literally nothing left because there was nothing else I was involved with, involved in, because I was so deeply involved in ballet. So it just kind of left me like, what is there to do? Coping with leaving school was very hard. I was really lucky to have really amazing te um Some of my tutors were my teachers from high school, but some of them weren't um, my actual teachers. So tutors slash teachers when I did homebound tutoring. So that worked out really well, but I missed a lot of my friends and a lot of them I didn't keep in contact with too much because it was really complicated what was going on and they didn't know really what to say and I didn't really know what to say and since we weren't in school together it was like what else do we talk about my dance friends didn't keep up with me so I didn't talk to them after I left ballet so I for the most part, except for a few school friends, um, I lost all contact with all the people that I've been seeing every day, which was really, really weird and really hard to adjust to. Ways that I have coped with this in the past and cope currently I just tried to do the best every day um, and keep myself busy. I turned to YouTube a lot and 
not talking about videotaping things. This was like before then. And just like watching things on YouTube and watching things on Netflix because I was bed bound at the time. And my brother was leaving for college and I was supposed to be leaving for college, but if I was healthy enough, but that wasn't going to happen. So there was the um, sadness that I was being left behind with my graduating class that was most of them going to college and I am going to college and I planned on going to college right after high school and that was put on hold so that's different with my friends now because it's like they're all talking about college and I'm sitting here like I made breakfast today woohoo right now my coping strategies a lot of it is still involving the things that I love. Even though I'm not taking ballet class, I try to stretch as much as I can because I'm so darn determined to get back to ballet and be like the best that I can be. That's really important to me and it gives me something to do and it's a distraction. And when you're home all the time, you need distractions because you can't just sit in your room and stare at a blank wall all day. And that's where Sonoma comes in greatly. He's been a fantastic coping mechanism. I am very lucky to not have depression or anxiety or a mental illness due to Lyme disease. Many people have anxiety and depression because they've been told that they're faking and they it's just a, a hot mess of doctors i'm very lucky and thankful that my life didn't turn into that i have to give a ton a ton of credit to where i coach no i'm not a full-time coach i'm not even close I coach a few hours four days a week. Growing up being a gymnast, even though I turned to classical ballet and stuck with classical ballet to become pre-professional and drop gymnastics when I was 13, it's still been a huge part of my life since I was three. And it's amazing that I get to work with my mom and that we're co-workers as coaches and dance instruction. So I'm not teaching ballet, I'm not at the dance studio. I really love working with the kids. I love it so much. I love getting to use dance and put it into gymnastics, which is the whole choreography process when it comes to floor and beam for the girls and I also work with the boys sometimes. I know gymnastics, I've grown up with gymnastics, my mom's grown up with gymnastics. So that's just great and I love that it's time where I get to help out the kids and it's not all about me. It's not all about my appointments, my this, my that. It's about me helping a kid with choreography, me helping a kid with a new skill, and getting to help them instead of me being always the person who needs the help. I really, really enjoy working at gymnastics and it's such a great environment to work in. I absolutely love getting to pick out floor music and choreograph floor routines. It is so amazingly helpful having such an extensive ballet and dance background to choreograph floor routines. So now I have this group of kids that I get to work with every week and it's so much fun for me because I love gymnastics and 
I will downright say that I love ballet a hundred times more than I love gymnastics as doing it physically myself but I absolutely love coaching gymnastics and working with the gymnasts and I think it's great that I get to use my knowledge of gymnastics and work in a gymnastics setting every day and I really look forward to working at gymnastics every day and that's been one of my biggest coping mechanisms. Sonoma is absolutely amazing. You know, just having him around is fantastic. He's so cuddly and snuggly when like I want him to be and then he's a cute playful one and a half year old puppy who just wants to play and chew a toy and be cute and you can't help but I can't help but smile and just be happy with having him around I keep in touch with friends who I've met through Lyme disease support groups um, friends that I have met in person um, one of my friends from Massachusetts and we don't get to see each other like often at all but we are really close friends I talk with my friend who works with dogs that are going to be becoming service dogs at the University of Delaware who I had um, biology class with sophomore year sophomore honors biology and uh, she lives like down the street from me and she was a gymnast so I'll send her like videos of gymnastics and we'll talk and um, she's also a New York Rangers hockey fan and we're a big hockey family so I keep in touch with her which is really nice and I hope to see these friends that are from high school over the summer for sure so a lot of other simple things are watching TV I love watching Dr. Phil I love watching medical documentaries I love watching dance and gymnastics things on YouTube but sometimes I can't watch too many ballet things because I just get sad because I miss it so much because I have such the drive to do it but my body's not ready to do it so sometimes I have to put a halt to the ballet things definitely the number one thing that has helped me get through this is going to gymnastics because I thoroughly enjoy it so much I look forward to it so much and I really do am passionate about working at gymnastics and looking up floor music and choreographing with my mom it's actually like let me look at my Fitbit it's 12 10 right now so this will be posted on Tuesday before I had to stop dancing ballet was one of my biggest coping was definitely my biggest coping mechanism with my pain and going through trying to figure out what was wrong with me because it was like things were stressful and uncertain and then I would go into ballet class and all you're worrying about at that time is are you doing the combination right is your right foot in front um are you did you pick up what's going on did you fix your correction is your arm in the right spot and I'm totally focused on ballet and in the moment and that was like when I never felt pain was when I was dancing that is how I deal with my chronic Lyme disease and how I've dealt with it in the past I do have a good support system it's not huge but you can have a million people who mean nothing or you could have 10, 15 people, 5 people who mean everything. And that's basically the boat I'm in is less people but such quality people that I keep in contact with. As I 
go through more and more things and the disease and the protocol and the treatment is always changing coping mechanisms change so maybe I'll make another video about this like an updated version if I come up with some different things that I do like in the summer that would probably be interesting and I'm excited for my brother to come home from college which I think is next week so that'll be fun maybe we'll get to go to the gym which will be interesting because obviously Sonoma's never been to a gym besides the gymnastics gym not like a workout gym so that might be fun and I'm excited to spend some time with him and go on some walks and do things with him and I'll be coaching gymnastics all summer so it really keeps me going I know everyone is different in the ways that they cope whether they see a therapist which I know tons of people with Lyme disease do oh another thing I love to do is that I love to sing I love to sing classical music so I do that as a coping mechanism and also just because I like singing because I've been singing before I was sick so that's something that I've enjoyed all my life having that support network and having an environment and something to do and a way to give back which for me my way of giving back right now is just coaching at gymnastics and helping others with things I already know and helping them to be the best gymnasts and the best people that they can be at their young age. I just really try to keep things in perspective and I really I'm just thankful for everything every day and I really think about that every day even on my worst days and every morning. It's really all about the little things that add up.